Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be around the city, across the state, coming to you from the heart of Chicago. It's e-learning with Mr. Moeller. On today's show, we're going to do a brief review of primary and secondary sources, and we're going to ask ourselves, what's your evidence? Uh, and so just to start us off here, a little review of primary and secondary sources. So all of our knowledge about anything ever in the past and present comes from somewhere, right? We don't make it up. We don't time travel. And so primary sources are the most important things that we can look at as historians and social scientists. You're looking for an artifact from the time you're trying to study. It could be a photograph. It could be somebody's diary. Um, it could be a social media post that you made uh, last Friday. Anything that's an artifact from the time helps us understand it and the people that created it. So then secondary sources, think about, you know, history books or the textbook where removed from the event, people kind of think about, well, based on all these different sources, what happened? And so a really great example, like a secondary source would be an encyclopedia or a textbook or something like that. And so very important to be able to distinguish between both because you have to read them very differently. So a really easy way to tell, um, you know, the difference between primary and secondary sources is just by asking your who, what, where, when, why questions. Who is the creator? Is it somebody in 2005 or is it somebody in, you know, 1945? Um, when was it created? Who was the creator? Uh, was it a president? Uh, was it an ordinary person? Um, was it a slave? Uh, was it a bracero? Who was it that created it? It'll often help you kind of locate it within um, kind of its space. Um, what does it deal with, right? If it's very specific about one event, um, does it deal with something contemporary or something in the past? And then finally, like, where was it published? Is it the Chicago Tribune? Um, is it, you know, published by the University of Chicago? And so asking these questions help you really easily understand uh, what you're looking at. So a really great example of this, let's just take a look at uh, the Vietnam War. So primary documents from the Vietnam War are everywhere. It was a very well-documented historical event. We have photographs, we have video, we have interviews um, with soldiers, prisoners on all sides of the conflict. And so we actually know a lot about what happened in Vietnam on all sides and how people at the time thought about it. Uh, on the right there is the Tonkin Resolution. Laws and, that the government passes uh, are gonna be really important in this class. And that was the law that Congress passed that gave the United States the power to fight the Vietnam War uh, pretty much without declaring it. And so these help us understand what were people thinking in the 1960s when we got into the Vietnam War. So spring off the Vietnam uh, War example, we also have a lot of histories that have been written about this. Um, we have the Vietnam War, which is a huge documentary that kind of tells the story of Vietnam. Um, you have Max Hastings' uh, Vietnam, very, very popular history book about the conflict. And so after the fact, usually 20 to 50 years after something happens, people go back to the evidence and they try to figure out what did all this chaos mean after it happened. Um, and then also because, and so other primary sources that we can look at um, can maybe be a little bit out the box. Um, I really like the idea that pop culture tells us a lot about what people believe, how they want to view themselves, um, because what's popular is what people are connecting to. So you can look at artwork, you can look at films uh, like Rocky IV encapsulated the Cold War in a very strange way. Um, TV advertising, um, you see the board game Battleship that has something to say as a primary source about gender roles uh, when this cover was made. Um, emails, social media posts, government records, interviews, there's all sorts of primary sources. So don't lock yourself into thinking that it's just like an interview or something like that. Anything can be a primary source. But with primary sources also comes a little bit of murky waters you have to navigate. Um, primary sources, let's be real. The teller of a story always has a personal bias and will always enhance the story in one way or another. Think about a story that you would tell your friends, your parents, and Mr. Moeller. You probably tell it in a very different way each time, and every time you tell a story, you always want yourself to be the hero. And so if you're reading like something from a slave, slave owner, like a letter in the 1830s, it's almost certain that this person would argue that slavery is morally acceptable and good because they are in their time and they have an interest in this. And so the bias is there. 
Um, also to embellishment. People say, oh, I saw Bigfoot or I saw this. So you always have to kind of take everyone's claims with a little bit of grain of salt when they're primary sources. Remember that evidence means having multiple things that are going to prove the same idea. Um, and so when we talk about secondary sources, um, secondary sources are a little bit different. Um, secondary sources, evidence can be easily manipulated um, or used selectively to prove any point. Um, for instance, let's write the history of Cristo Rey adult athletics. Um, I can claim my thesis that Mr. Muller is currently the best athlete at Cristo Rey because I played football and rugby in the 2000s. Well, if I, you know, uh, if I looked at that and you could say, oh, yeah, Mr. Moeller played sports, but I would ignore the hard evidence that there are over six teachers at Cristo Rey who have run multiple marathons since 2010. I don't think I'm anywhere near the top of athletes. But again, secondary sources, bias can be a very big piece. And so when we're looking at sources, there's different scenarios in which to use each. Secondary sources give us context, general knowledge, and summary. This is your Wikipedia page that's going to just kind of give you a general sense of what happened. And then primary sources help us dig down into the motivations, the choices, and the consequences of all these events that are going to happen in history. And so now that we've talked a little bit about the difference between primary and secondary sources, I'm going to ask you guys to go in your OneNote packet and complete the activities in order to practice and develop these skills a little more. Have a great rest of your day.